Ugh, ads are such poop. Subscribe to ACAST Plus now to skip ads and more for just $1 a month. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. And hey, we're on Patreon too. Your support helps cover the cost of running a podcast. For $2 a month, you can get early access to all our episodes ad-free, plus bonus episodes exclusive to Patreon subscribers only. Visit patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse to sign up now. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys. We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! You know what we're doing? I do. What are we doing? We are... Fuck, what are we doing? We're doing a (laughs) wrap-up of the book My brain... You you ever have your brain just, like, stop working out of nowhere? But I wasn't expecting it to happen to you just then, because... We had literally just I know, talked we about it before just we hit record. Said it right before we hit record. So, so we're, we're doing what now? We're doing the wrap up of the book of Nehemiah. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense because that's what we talked about mm-hmm. prior to this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. stupid intro that I'm creating in my head. Well, yes, <laughs> that you weirdo. All right. So, um, do you have anything else you wanted to say before we get into this? Or I almost went down a rabbit hole and then I stopped myself. Mm, okay. But I'm going to recommend a bonus episode. So, oh, let's get in here. Okay, let's go do this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now before I get into all that um, rabbit, rabbit hole, shit. hole shit, yeah, yeah, let's talk about Nehemiah some. Yeah, that's okay? a good idea. Since yeah. it's you know the Nehemiah wrap up, right? You'll understand why I'm like trying not to rabbit hole in just a minute. Okay, okay? yeah, but let's just get through this. Yeah. So to recap, Nehemiah under the edict, 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 <laughs> ed- idiot, edict. <laughs> Of Cyrus II, the Jewish people returned back to Israel in three different waves of migration. Right. Right? Yeah. So the first one was under the leadership of, do you remember? Uh, That, no. Shesh Bazaar. Yeah, that's the guy. In 538 BC. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they finished building the temple under the leadership of Zerubbabel in 515 BC. And Zerubbabel may have also been Shesh Bazaar. Okay. Do you remember that? He, vaguely, yes. Like, it was it was a while ago, you know. Like it's yeah, been a while. Yeah. I remember um, the name. Now that you're saying them, I remember it. Well, know? one of them may have been a, his title, or one of them may have been his name in Babylon. Okay. So we don't know. Got it. But it, it's suggested that they're probably the same guy. Got it. Okay? I do remember kind of discussing that at some point. So mm-hmm. yeah. So that was the first return. Okay. Yeah. The next wave. I got this one. Ezra. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Came 81 years later in 458 BC. Okay. And yeah, it was Ezra. Okay. Okay, and that's what we read about. Right. In Ezra. Yeah. Okay. The third return. Nehemiah. Was under Nehemiah, yes, in 445 BC. Okay. Okay. Now, most scholars believe that Nehemiah was actually a real historical figure. Okay. So he probably really existed. This dude was real. Yeah. And real something. <laughs> and um, they also believe that the Nehemiah memoir, which is a name given by scholars to certain portions of the book that were written in first person. Okay. That it actually is historically reliable. Interesting. Yeah. So. Really? Most scholars do believe that a lot of that shit actually happened, which makes sense because nothing magical happened in right. that book. It well, was in fact, all the rebuilding, and it was all about the governorship between him and Persia. Well, and we commented multiple times that even when he was, you know, talking to God, mm-hmm. it was about God recognizing him. Yes. It wasn't actual talks with God. No. Like in other books. Like other books in the Bible so far, 
there's been a back and forth of some type, mm-hmm. you know, like God said to do this or do that. Or the book just tells us and God had him do that. Right. Yeah, this, but there was none of that in no, this No, this was all just history. Right. And apparently... Really bad history. Yeah, totally. Like, totally. Skewed history. Absolutely. But stuff that could have happened and according to some, some scholars, of some of it probably did, which right. makes sense. I right. mean, shit did get rebuilt. Sure. So, yeah. whatever. So, appearing in the Queen's presence, remember how I told you that um, Duda Nehemiah was... Um, Cupbearer? Cupbearer, and that was a very important job. Yes. And, like, we made fun of him for, like, <laughs> yeah. carrying a cup around before we understood that he was, like, the food taster or right, whatever. Right, right, which obviously is very important back then, I right. guess. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, he was his most trusted right. person, confidant. Because, this dude would die for you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, literally, it's his job to plan your meals. He's your dietitian. He um, has to taste everything before it comes out. He has to, he like, he's in charge of that whole thing. Yeah. So, I mean, he's very trusted. Um, but because of that, he would have to appear in the queen's presence sometimes. Okay. Which men are not supposed to do. Oh. So, it may indicate that he was a eunuch. Oh. Do you know what a eunuch is? Doesn't have a, uh, you know, a thingy down a there. Ding, ding dong. Yeah. yeah. No dick. No dick. No dick. Yeah. So he may have been a eunuch. And in the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, the Septuagint, he is actually described as such. Really? Yep. Huh. Yep. As a eunuch rather than a wine cup bearer. Because the words in Greek are very, very similar. Oh. Um, eunokos versus oinoko. Oinokus. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, so it could have been very easily eunuch. mistranslated. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So he's probably a eunuch. Got it. And there's some question as to whether or not he was the cupbearer also. But he may have been both. Sure. Why else, besides being a eunuch, would he be in the king's presence? Right. And right. hold such a high position. Yeah. So I, I suggest, I put forth that he was probably both. Okay. All right. Okay. Now. In one rabbinic text, the Agata, mm-hmm. um, it identifies Nehemiah as Zerubbabel, with the latter being considered an epithet, which is a title. But and Zerubbabel, wasn't that the, the, the same sh- guy that we Shez said Bizarre. is Shes Bazar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that would mean that Zerubbabel would be um, a title. Okay. And that um, he was actually born in... Babylon. Got it. So I don't I don't know the truth to that. I'm just telling you sure. what I read. Yeah, right. It's that. not they don't think it's the same person, obviously, right? No, they do. Oh, they uh, that Nehemiah and Zerubbabel and Shis 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 Shish Bazaar. Bazaar. Yeah. Even though they're like a hundred years yes. plus p- apart or yes. whatever? Yes. Okay, I'm I'm, conf- I, I'm confused. I have no idea. I'm just telling you what's happening. Like I could okay? see Ezra and Nehemiah being the same person because you know time and frames. That is also suggested. Jesus Christ, they're all fucking one person. They are. Everybody's one person. <laughs> <laughs> there was no Adam and Eve. There was the Eve. <laughs> <laughs> so another oral tradition in the Mishnah records that Nehemiah was blamed for, which we've read this one before. Blamed for seeming to boast and disparage his predecessors. And this tradition asserts that his book was appended to the book of Ezra as a consequence rather than being a separate book in its own right as it is in the Christian Old Testament. Okay. So, like, we're reading it as a separate book. Remember, it used to be one book, Ezra yeah. and Nehemiah together. Right. And this tradition suggests that um, he was added as a footnote, basically, in punishment, so that you and I would read it as we did that boastful son of a bitch. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's how it came across, right? Like, it's yeah. not. It was. I I was kind of appalled by this guy. Mm-hmm. You it was know, as far as far as the Bible story goes thus far, you know, yeah. like he's just kind of a jackass. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. It's it's like that other story we heard where he was in trouble for. Talking smack, but yeah. this is like, and not only that, but yeah, he did write this, but then he had to A, not take credit, and B, write this extra little bit to make himself look like shit. Basically, the Jewish people were like, get a load of this asshole. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. In another Talmudic text, the Baba Bathra. 
The Baba ba- I love that name. Right? Baba Bathra. Yeah. You could say that all night. I know. Baba Bathra. <laughs> yeah. Records indicate that Nehemiah completed the Book of Chronicles, which was always said to have been written by Ezra. So. Okay. That's, that's not confusing at all. No. In any so, way. What? <laughs> Ezra and Nehemiah may have been the same person, may have not been the same person. One or both of them may also have been the chronicler, or they may have all been separate people. And the first person stuff may have been added in later on, which it is, that is what we think today. But historians, but historians definitely think that Nehemiah existed. Yes. At the very least. At and, the very least. And Okay. Yeah. It's, that's, even in the clarification, that's really confusing as fuck. I know. I know. And it only gets worse. Jesus okay? Christ. I know. I know. This is where we start to rabbit hole. Okay? <laughs> because, okay, so you know how Ezra and Nehemiah were considered one book at one time. Yeah. And um, before they were separated. Um, you got to keep they, them. You got to keep them separated. Yeah. But at one point, they were one book. And as a matter of fact, that book used to be connected to Chronicles, which also was Good one book. God. So it was First and Second Chronicles and Ezra and Nehemiah all together as one book. Holy shit. And then it was split up. And so we had First and Second Chronicles as one book and Ezra and Nehemiah as a second book. Then, of course, the Chronicles were split up and then Ezra and Nehemiah were split up. Got it. Okay. So we're good on that. I'm good. I mean, so far. Well. There were also some other books that came after that that are not included in ours. Okay. Those are the, we've seen reference to these. By the same people? Don't know. Not <laughs> there. Okay. Okay. But um, we've seen reference to these. These are the Estras. Okay. E-S-D-R-A-S. Okay. Okay. Yep. And these are in very, very, very old Bibles, like that were first translated from um, the Latin into um, Greek and Hebrew, I think, or I, I'm getting it However it went, they're, but, but they're really fucking old. They're really fucking old, okay? Yeah. This is where it gets really confusing and why I had to stop because okay. this rabbit holes and I want to have a bonus episode that's nothing but estras. Okay. okay. Yeah. But here's here's a little bit about them just to like pique your interest. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So the easiest way to talk about them is that Ezra is called first Ezra. Nehemiah is called second Ezra. Okay. Because remember that was the book yeah, of Ezra sure. split in half. Right. And then these other Estras okay. were um third Ezra, fourth Ezra, fifth Ezra, oh, and God. sixth Ezra. Ezra, oh, but God. they're all real short. Okay? okay, yeah. Okay, so um, here's another way though that they were also referred to. This gets real confusing. Okay, if you weren't already confused, I'm so lost. So, okay. but I mean, I mean, not really. I mean, but like, you know, I first and second is, so Ezra, the Ezra's or whatever, they're a continuation of Ezra and Nehemiah. Essentially. Yes, okay. yes. So, but you also know, first and second Ezra. It's just another way of saying Ezra and Nehemiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? yeah I got gotcha. you. So third Ezra is where we start to get like, we don't know what we're talking about because we don't have that in our Bible. Right, right. Okay. So third Ezra is also sometimes called just by itself the Greek Estrus. And then fourth, fifth, and sixth Ezra are one book called the Latin Estras. Okay. So we've got um, first and second Ezra. And then we've got the Greek estrus, which is third Ezra. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Latin estrus, which is fourth, fifth, and sixth Ezra. Holy crap. Or Ezra. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But that's not all. That's not all, folks. That's not all. So, um, there's also another book that was translated that put them in different order. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So, even talking about these estras. Yeah. Um. And extra Ezra's. <laughs> right. Um, I wouldn't even know what order to put them in. My God. Right. But, um, so these are um, first Estrus. Yeah. Which is equivalent to third Ezra. Got it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So um, second Estrus. The fourth. Would be, you would think fourth Ezra. Yeah. 
All the rest of them are from 4th Ezra. They're just various chapters of 4th Ezra. Oh, okay. So but why do they have separate names then? Because, um... Because they wanted to? Th- because this Bible broke it down differently. That's okay. all. all right. That's all. Got it. So, um, in these Estras, it would be chapters 3 through 14 of 4th Ezra. Okay. And then the next one would be chapters 1 and 2 of 4th Ezra. Okay. So now we've got 1 through 14 just out of order. Yeah, right? yeah. And then the next one, the last one, 4th Estrus, chapters 15 through 16. Got it. Okay. I guess. Right. I mean, okay. Right. So what the fuck are those, right? And why do we care is right. the question. Yeah. Now that... We've got it out of the way that there's so many different ways to refer to them. And it depends on which orthodoxy you're part of. Yeah. Because there's Greek orthodoxy. There's Eastern orthodoxy. There's um, Americans, which don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about and never heard of it before. Right, which is right. a fucking shame because it's their book. <laughs> right. And um, there's various Jewish orthodoxies that it just depends on which one they own or deal with or work with or read from whatever right okay so but all of them have the same basic material in them okay and um whatever that material is it talks about ezra having several visions okay and in these visions he is talking to god and asking god all kinds of questions like why um, don't we own the whole planet it, and, you know, if you could make it so kind yeah, of thing. right. And the answer is, it's not yours to know. You, mankind cannot understand. Okay. That kind of thing. Yeah. Why is so-and-so sick? Why can't you just heal him is one of the questions. And the answer is, you can't understand. Is that the, the answer all the way fucking through? Um, from what I could tell, like, I only read a couple of them before I was like, this needs to be an episode. Right. So, um... He has all these different visions. It gets kind of um, into, like, the apocalypse kind of thing. Like, from um, what you might read in, um, what's the final one? Revelation. Revelation. Yeah. Um, Because there's, like, a six-headed something or other with swords and wings I've heard about this in something I was reading, actually. I I heard somebody talking about these books, I think. And I I think it was uh, Bart Ehrman, the one I was reading, The Misquoting Jesus. He was talking about other books in the Old Testament that had revelation ish or revelation isk, um, you know, yeah. things that basically were a precursor to revelation. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that so, would have been your estras. Interesting. For sure. Interesting. So yeah. that that's 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 interesting. Mm-hmm. That's a neat tie mm. into what you were reading. Yeah. No. So, so I'm, I'm intrigued now. The last thing I'm going to say about it, and I hope that you agree that this needs its own episode. Yep. I'm already on board, I think. Okay. The last thing I'm going to say about it is that some of the Estras are considered by most scholars to be Christian in origin, not Jewish, meaning they were added later. They assert God's rejection of the Jews and describe a vision of the Son of God. And these are generally considered to be late editions, possibly third century. I was going to so, say, like, there's no way that this is written by Nehemiah right. slash Ezra or whatever. Exactly. Because if it is Christian editions, then, yeah, it would have to be second to third century at the earliest. Yes, exactly. So, so huh. it's still interesting. And I'm not sure if I want to, like, do the episode on it, like, now while we're in the middle of Nehemiah, Ezra, and this is where it would go. Yeah. Or if we're like, wait, but this is outside of the scope of the bible and so we should wait till the end like i don't know how you want to do it i think we could do a synopsis of it and then Mm -hmm. we could cover it again more in depth maybe later after we're done with the bible right i think that's how we would play it um but i like how we're just figuring this out on the fly on the podcast yeah um but i find it interesting because you said that these books are in like the jewish bibles essentially right some of them some of them Okay, but if they were written... Early Jewish Bibles. Right, 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 right. But if they were written in Christ, like as a Christian edition... Not all of them were. Oh, okay. Some of the Estras. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Not Fair all enough. the Estras. Some of the Estras. Got it, got it. So somebody, there was Estras and then somebody that was Christian added to the Estras. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. I, it makes a little bit more sense, I guess, because I was like, how does this stuff end up in the Jewish Bible? Because they were different denominations at that point, like hardcore. Hardcore, yeah. So, all right. No, that's that's fun. Yeah, but you see how, like, A, I couldn't help but rabbit hole on that, but B, it's not within the scope of Nehemiah. Right, right. It's um, just, like, it's the next chapter, basically. So. I do think that we maybe can find this to a Patreon episode, though. I agree. Because we're going to cover it again after we're done with the Bible, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, I say we, you know, our, totally our patrons agree. should get special access to it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, um, and you could do it, you know what, I, I should say this, if you guys really are interested in this episode... I should mention that we do have a free two-week trial that you can do at the $5 level. So if you don't like it after two weeks or you just want to listen to one episode that you're really interested in, there is a free two-week trial that you can do on the $5 level um, that would allow you to listen to at least one episode that we would put out. So um, that's always available if you guys are really, really interested and pissed off that we're like, well, we're going to make this just for the patrons. Well, you can still listen just right. to that one, yeah. you know. <laughs> The thing is, is our patrons are supporting us, and they are basically our sponsors. And they are. So we owe it to them to give them a little bit of yeah, extra stuff. Yeah, and considering we are going to cover this again after we're done with the Bible, mm-hmm. I think that's only fair. No, so. totally. I agree. All right. Well, that was the uh, Nehemiah wrap-up, huh? Nehemiah wrap-up plus. Plus, yeah. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow, uh, well, actually, we're kind of putting this out really late on the day that we're supposed to do it, so... In just a few minutes, we're going to be doing the... Contradictions or you're always wrong. Right. That will, you are. That will hit tomorrow um, from our time frame right now at 6 a.m. Yep. And then uh, we'll be back after that on Wednesday with... First Esther, unless we push that back in order to do our... Or are we waiting to do our Patreon? Oh, yeah. No, okay. Yeah. We'll do it on a regular Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Like I said, we're still figuring this out on the air, so you're looking at me like I'm nuts, but no, I you're fine, didn't you're fine. have it figured out. No, we, we just did a Patreon. We talked about our trip to hell. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. So Sorry. No, you're good. Nope. So then on Wednesday, we'll be first, or uh, Esther chapter one. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. We'll see you guys then. Yep. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Oh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.